Hello, my name is Carlton Shield Chief Grover. I'm a citizen of the Pawnee Nation of Oklahoma, a PhD student in anthropology at the University of Colorado Boulder, and the Native American Science intern here at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science located in Denver, Colorado. Uh, thank you for joining me on another installment uh, for the tiny lecture series by Archaeology Now. Today we're going to be talking about the Jones Miller collection from the Jones Miller uh, Bison archaeological site that is located in eastern Colorado near the town of Ray. So we're pretty much almost into Kansas at that point if you're as far as uh, Ray, Colorado. Now this site um, was originally excavated um, from 1972 to the summer of 1975 um, by Dennis Stanford of the Smithsonian. At the site itself, they recovered thousands upon thousands of disarticulated bison skeletal remains. Now, disarticulated means that the skeletons that were recovered, the bones themselves, were not found in their correct position that these animals were intention, intentionally and intensively butchered by um, pre-colonial indigenous populations thousands of years ago. Now, how old are we talking about? Well, the Jones Miller site is what we call or have identified as a Hell Gap archeological site. Hell Gap gets its name from the Hell Gap site in uh, Wyoming, just north of Guernsey, Wyoming, on the eastern part of the state, which I had the pleasure of excavating at for two seasons. It is now a National Historic Landmark. And why is this site all the way in Colorado named after Hell Gap? And the reason being is because of the projectile points that were recovered from the site. So this is a Hell Gap point more closely. Um, these points were originally found at, at the Hellgap site in Wyoming, and it's kind of like custom in uh, American archaeology to name uh, new types or new kinds of projectile points um, after the site they're found, county or whatever, um, or other location, I should say. So this is a Hellgap point. Um, so we find over two dozen, close to like 50 really, um, about two dozen complete, 50 total incomplete, and then a bunch of um, debitage or uh, leftover material from the process of resharpening and creating projectile points. So, this is how we know it's a hell gap <laughs> site because we find a bunch of hell gap points. Um, they, the raw material used to create these points comes from all over um, the plains itself. So among the raw materials that are found at the Jones Miller site um, that have created a lot of these beautiful points, we have flat top flint from Nebraska, Smoky Hill Jasper from Kansas, and a lot of different materials from the Hartville Uplift um, in Eastern Wyoming um, and Western Nebraska, as well as uh, petrified wood and some raw material from Texas. So what this tells us about the people that created these points is either they had to travel long distances to get them, um, to get the raw material themselves in order to produce these beautiful Hellgat points such as these. And what we are currently doing with the Jones Miller collection, the points are fascinating, don't get me wrong, they're some of the coolest materials that you can find in archeology, span um, at least the public thinks so, is we're really trying to redate the Jones Miller site. Like I said earlier, the uh, site was originally excavated back in the 1970s, and um, the original researchers, researching team, believed that this wasn't just one butchering event, that there were multiple times in which indigenous populations came to this site to butcher bison. And the reason why they believe that is based on dentition of bison mandibles recovered from the site. And now why would bison mandibles uh, make it so that previous researchers would believe that there's multiple events happening? Well, just like humans, bison and these inst uh, extinct species of bison, bison antiquus, um, they're molars and teeth, they have baby teeth and they have grown up teeth. And they erupt 
at different points in their life on a pretty consistent basis. So what we have is we have some um, baby bison that have molar eruptions at three months old, but then you also have some at nine months, some at 15 months. And those don't really overlap with each other because bison give birth to calves um, in the spring. You don't have uh, 365 day birthing cycles with bison. So we know that there's probably two events. So that's what we are trying to do here at DMNS is to redate this site, look at different age groups of bison and date the mandibles. And I can show you. So here's one of the bison mandibles that we have here. We have quite a lot. So little little bison smile here for you. And it's based on the eruption of these teeth, which tell us how old the bison is and therefore um, led these original researchers back in the 70s who continue to work on this site well um, into the past couple of years um, to realize that there are more than one butchering event. So what we're trying to do is radiocarbon date um, a large sample of bison mandibles from different age groups and see if um, Bayesian statistical analysis of radiocarbon data from these mandibles um, will tell us how uh, the difference in time, if at all. Um, with radiocarbon dating, you know, you have error ranges of 10 to 15 years. And so if we have um, a bite, these bison butchering events happening one year after another, we won't be able to tell that with radiocarbon dating, but that's just fine because that in itself tells us that within one generation, um, a generation of people were using this, this locality to butcher bison. And this tells us a lot about the behaviors of the indigenous populations here in, at the end of the uh, Ice Age, in the beginning of the uh, Great Prairie Maximum. To see such a dense concentration of bones there at Jones Miller shows us or informs us that they were trying to extract as much protein and nutrients out of these animals as possible. Which is different. Other sites you'll see only the choice cuts of meat have been taken. But here at Jones Miller, these were intensively butchered. And if we're able to use these new radiocarbon dates that we're here collecting, we'd be able to compare them with possible uh, climatic shifts in the environment which might give us a hint to why um, the indigenous folks here that used Jones Miller over 10,000 years ago um, made sure to use the most out of bison that they could. Thank you so much for joining me today um, here at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science and be sure to check out more content by Archaeology Now and other videos of their tiny lecture series. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day.